can't sell farm killed meat by law. All meat has to go through uh, an abattoir, a mm. registered abattoir, and yeah. it has to be inspected by a government licensed meat inspector. Yeah. That is the law. Yeah. Um, Are you getting so this? <laughs> we have we have no option there at all. Yeah. Um, and there are various very good reasons for that, and we're completely supportive of that system. Yeah. Um, so they travel over to Cootamundra, is a, which is our closest abattoir, for slaughter. Yeah. And then um, two days later, the bodies come back in a refrigerated truck to the butcher shop here in Batlow. Yep. And then the next day, Mandy goes over and she works shoulder to shoulder with the butcher in the back of the butcher shop. Yep. Guiding his knife, basically, telling her him exactly what she wants done with the animal. Um, she does all the packaging that's all cryovac, which is vacuum packaging. Yep. Uh, it's all vacuum packed. Um, the meat... There's been a lot of work done on this and a lot of discussion around it. The meat actually ages equally as well in plastic in the vacuum pack as it does hanging. Okay. Um, the advantage to us as a producer with vacuum packing over dry aging is that there's no loss of weight. Yeah. Um, mm. The dry aging process, there's a lot of wastage on the outside of the animal as the, as the meat dries off. Um, there's a lot of wastage there just thrown out. Yeah. And that's that's just that's just pointless and wasteful if you have the opportunity to cryovac it, to vacuum pack it. So with the cryovac and you have a moist meat that's well aged. Yeah. Okay. I prefer. Yeah. And then yeah, Mandy takes over with the with descriptions of how she wants each cut done and etc. So she's become a bit of an expert in uh, <laughs> in where things come from. <laughs> well, being the experts on beef, can you start to tell us about the different cuts? Oh, I can't. Well, generally Jay will pull out the um, two four quarters because your carcass is cut into quarters. So you have yeah. two four quarters and two hind quarters um, yeah. hanging in the cool room. So he'll bring out the two four quarters. The uh, first primal that he puts on the table and asks me how I would like it cut is the blade, um, named from the shoulder blade. So it's a shoulder blade that comes out onto the table. Um, Shoulder blade steaks, um, ours are actually particularly tender, and I know that um, people are used to blade being quite a tough meat, but um, try ours. Mm -hmm. okay. So you can have your blade steak with the bone in, which is a lovely barbecue cut mm -hmm. for summertime, um, or uh, you can have it cut thick um, for just a pan fried or, or um, grill fried um, steak. Then there's uh, the oyster blade steak, which is another section of the shoulder. The oyster blade is particularly tender. It does have a sinew through the middle of it, so you can either cut it into a thick steak through the sinew, and that's a lovely slow cook steak, although I do know some people who love that as a, as a pan fried steak as well. But generally you would slow cook that one. Um, what I get our butcher to do is to fillet the oyster blade either side of the sinew um, and that is traditionally called flat iron but I don't like that name so we've given it a Scottish name, the claymore steak is what we call it, terribly tender so that's a very popular one at the markets. Um, <coughs> the third piece of meat um, out of the shoulder blade is a tongue-shaped fillet, which is uh, called the devil's tongue. Oh, okay. So that's either a, a nice little roast on its own or sliced into little steaks, terribly lean. Yeah. Um, nice little children-sized steak for okay. summertime um, and lovely slow cooked in wintertime. Um, then, um, then the, there's the chuck. Okay, and that seems to live up above the yeah, blade the, shoulder. The chuck is up, yeah, more up around the pole um, and neck area yeah. of the animal. Um, chuck traditionally is your slow cook, lots of flavour, um, enough fat in there, and it, it just gets cooked for three, Flavors. four hours with all the wonderful flavours that we like to add to our casseroles. Um, 
in behind the chuck is where you have your um, your scotch fillet, okay. um, or your ribeye, as scotch is called when uh -huh. it's on the bone still. Yeah. So you can have a ribeye roast, which is your full scotch on the bone, okay. or um, I'll have single or double on the bone available on the stall. Um, very, very popular, terribly tender. Um, I do do the fillet as well. So there's a lot of different ways of cutting your, your scotch. Yeah, um, in behind the scotch is your strip loin. Um, which is basically your, your porterhouse um, T-bone area. Oh, okay. um, so I have that either on, on the bone or I take the bone out um, and cut it very thick. I could then call that a New York. Uh, yes. So um, I call the one on the bone the porterhouse okay. and New York off the bone. Uh, you can call them all sorts of different things, but basically it's your loin area. Um, the T-bone um, includes the eye fillet. So that's the tender part of the T-bone. Yeah. The eye fillet is a fillet that sits inside the body of the animal. Um, it's a muscle that isn't used and therefore it's very, very tender. Uh -huh. But it doesn't have a lot of flavour. Okay. But everyone loves the eye fillet because mm. of its tenderness. Um, so I tend not to do T-bone because I sell so much eye fillet on its own. Yeah. Okay, so can you tell us how mince is actually made? While the butcher's cutting all these different cuts for me from the whole animal, he's trimming and um, the trimmings go into three buckets under the table. One of them is the sausage, so the trimmings which have the most fat left on them will go into the sausage bucket. And then there's another two buckets for mince, um, so I have um, a best grade mince which we call extra lean, yep. and we have um, a lesser grade which has got a bit of fat in it. So he'll just pop his off cuts into those buckets for me. Uh, when we finish slicing and packing all the steaks, and other cuts off the animal, then he'll throw um, the mince into the mincer, and that goes through the mincer twice, so it's nice and fine. Um, and then I'll pack that up at the end of our day in the butcher. And your sausages are um, well and extraordinary. Um, the beef sausages actually taste like beef sausages. Nothing because that, that is all that goes in them. I was going to say now, what actually goes into your sausage? Mince? Beef. <laughs> Just beef. And the sausage mix, which is the butcher's sausage mix. Okay. And, yes. That's and, it. and those ingredients are all listed on the pack of the sausages. Okay. They are gluten-free, but tasty gluten-free. Awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Now, Manda is very kind enough that if you have any questions about different cuts of meat as through this interview, if you prefer your steaks thicker or thinner, please don't hesitate to come up to Mandarin at the markets and actually ask for what you're looking for. Absolutely.